Um, all right, my name is Cody Wilson. I'm with Defense Distributed. You could call me the director of Defense Distributed, but it seems these days I'm mostly the PR guy, not having a lot of time for direction. Um, Defense Distributed is a project about printing an ABS firearm, not for the purpose of having a printable firearm, although that seems kind of crazy and exotic, but making sure you have something that works, taking the file and then sharing that with as many people as possible across the internet in the same kind of dis uh, emphasis on decentralization and distribution uh, that Bitcoin represents. Defense Distributed hopes to uh, hitch our progress on, or <laughs> hitch, our, hitch the end of our goal on the progress of 3D printing and, and enable people to engage in direct peer-to-peer -peer transactions. And, uh, it, it's hard to explain. Okay, so is uh, Defense Distributed, is it like a profitable project for you? Do you plan to make lots of money from no, it? No, in fact, I, I don't think, I can't really see a direct path to monetization of what we're doing. Defense Distributed hasn't made any money per se. We're still $1,500 away from our, our goal even, and the goal is for things that are already basically spent. I mean, I've already sunk a lot of my own money into it. Um, so would you, I mean, is it a bit like open source software movement or free software? Right, right. Profit? We're trying to find a way, the perfect way to license uh, the gun files when we make them. Should should they be made? Should we determine that they're proven and should be released? But yeah, we're thinking along the lines of open source, uh, BSD, modified BSD, this lib license is the one I like the most. It maintains very basic notices and warranties. So uh, it maintains attribution, uh, original authorship in case someone wants to have that. Um, and then it says, you know, no, no implied warranty of usability and things like that. And then that's it. You can use it for whatever you want. And we're not even flipping off the, uh, the no commercial use switch. So it literally can be used for anything. And that's the point. So it can be used for commercial use? Yeah, anyone can use it for anything. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you see yourself as ideologically motivated? Uh, principally, yes. I mean, my, my motivations are ideological. They're not, they're not technological specifically. Do you have sympathies one way or another? Are you particularly inclined towards free market capitalism? Oh, so, okay, general sympathies, right? Socialism or you mean as like, hmm, as political projects? You mean do I have a, a particular sympathy in the ongoing ideological battles? Um, no, there's no, there's no one team that I'm on, I'm on board with, especially not. I mean, I, I completely disagree with, in fact, I can define my politics in terms of just pure disagreements, right? The liberal project, the American liberal project of, of socialism, the socialist project generally, the whole history of socialism, I'm completely against. I stand in opposition to socialist projects everywhere, um, and that's probably the best way to define it. That seems counterintuitive considering your project. Well, it depends on how you would determine or define your version of socialism, right? I, I see socialism, I guess, in economic terms and, and in terms of political philosophy as something that confuses, belies, undermines individual rights, which I would elevate above most other kinds of rights. And the point of defense distributed is to elevate individual rights? Defense distributed's goal is to well, let's say it this way, right? Defense Distributed believes in individual rights. If it, see, I, I don't want to ascribe my personal belief specifically to the project. The project will, I think, empower individuals in a very obvious and direct way. Uh, but it, it also communicates a certain message about the ultimate belief, well, the ultimate sovereignty of individuals. How to say this? I'm not very good at explaining the project. I mean, I think uh, in, in some ways I can explain it, in some ways I can't. I think Defense Distributed will enable people to do things that they will have to have the choice or make the choice to do themselves. You know? And so it really underlines your responsibility as a moral agent, your ability um, to do what you will, you know, rightly or wrongly. Uh, so the technology of 3D printing can apply to everything, right? And the, the gun is just kind of, uh, I mean, it's a controversial mm. one, obviously, and, and right. I think you you suggested that you think it's inevitable. Right. Is that why you, uh, you're, it's, you it's, picked it as a... As it a, isn't the inevitability that brought us to the project. In fact, it's it's totally impractical and a little bit un, unwieldy right now when the state of... I mean, rapid prototypers deal with these cheap, brittle plastics. Um, ABS is not a very strong plastic at all. Its yield strengths aren't quite up to par for most the operational pressures of most current you know live ammunition. But no, it's not that I think it's inevitable that... I thought, well, we should just go ahead and do this. No, it was just, well, let's try to print a gun. That's where we started, and then we said, well, let's, let's not just try to print a gun, man. Let's try to, like, get, as a project, let's try to get the gun to people. Mm. And that's what really got us all going, and, and here we are. And would you say, I mean, what do you say to people who, you know, accuse you of kind of open source terrorism? Open source terrorism. <laughs> it hasn't been said in those words quite yet, 
I would say that I'm not a terrorist and I mean I go to Baudrillard when I think about the terrorist ethic. I'm not trying to terrorize. So I wouldn't define myself as a terrorist and it's not just to play word games. I don't think I'm using, I'm not engaging anyone in a way that a terrorist would. I'm not threatening people with the disruption of their, of their lives in a way that's meant to harm them or to prove some point uh, against them. Uh, I think what we're doing is ennobling uh, and perhaps salvific. So. You mean it leads to salvation, individual salvation? Yeah, I mean, in a way, it, it, well, you know, that's such a strong word, right? Especially coming from its religious context. But I mean, I don't know what I don't know a quicker word to communicate all the right all the right concepts like that. I think it would really, hypothetically, and then in the future, if a printable gun is your only option, and then that seems so silly, right? Because I can you can always fashion together a zip gun out of just homemade parts. But I mean, let's say you're not a professional, not a professional, you're not an expert user. Really, you know, you'd have to hypothesize some years in the future, but like if downloading a gun and clicking print is the most expedient way in some situation to have some, some personal protection, then yes, I want in that very narrow future hypothetical situation, yes. I think that's where the alarm bells go off when I listen to you speak because I think like with, with, with Gutenberg, you know, uh, the printing press was kind of uh, a road to liberation and education, right? Whereas I, I don't. I'm British, obviously, and we don't have guns, right? Well, so I can kind of some of you don't have guns. Most of us don't have guns. <laughs> and we, we have a low murder rate and all the rest of it. Right. So, like, as a result, when I hear people talking about having guns to increase their liberty and freedom, mm -hmm. you know, instinctively, it's just in my, my makeup that I'm right. just like, that's, that's just a crazy idea. Yeah, yeah, and I've, I've gotten that from quite a bit of uh, British, I guess. I would say, one, states, states breed these kinds of attitudes as well. So it's not entirely your own. But two, I would say, that's fine. If that's your personal constitution, that's fine. You know, but I mean, are we talking about making political decisions for other people at this point? I mean, some people in Britain must want a gun or must have had a gun at some point and would rather have one. I mean, why have we determined, why is it somehow more valid that a, a larger group of people have said that, well, you really shouldn't have one. And like, do we really believe in these legal fictions that like, well, the people have spoken. You know, this is this is what the nature. This is the will of the people. Right, and I wanted to ask you about that as well because it seems that you're you're elevating individual uh, liberties over group kind of uh, decisions, right? Well, am am I doing that? Am I like am I saying one superior to the other? Okay, yeah, I, I think I'm emphasizing that the importance of individual rights and individual decision making. Uh, will I try to make that you know, more important than group decision making? Yeah, probably. But I mean, I'm not trying to say, oh man, the, see what, I, what I, you're saying, well, you're elevating this over this. I'm really not trying to make value calls. I'm just, I'm just coming from a perspective saying, like, individual liberty is very important. This is a project that I think really uh, underlines individual liberty. You know, here it is. Um, I'm not, I don't want to get into a big, you know, philosophical debate. All right, okay. That, that, that's my, you know. Yeah, yeah. Kind of Sorry if that was just unwieldy and everything, but I guess, well, go ahead. Well. You know, the obvious question is, how does this all relate to Bitcoin? Like, yeah. uh, the reason that I'm interested in Bitcoin, sorry, I like Bitcoin, I'm a Bitcoin enthusiast, mm -hmm. but the reason that I think it, it's uh, uh, exciting mm -hmm. is that people are drawn to it to buy drugs, guns, mm -hmm. uh, they're drawn to it for money laundering, one assumes, uh, you know, it's outside the taxation system, it's it's naturally countercultural, rebellious, and all the rest of it. Um, yeah. Is it... Are you attracted to Bitcoin because of those reasons? I'll answer it this way. Am I, uh, my attraction to Bitcoin happened accidentally in, in relation to really how this, I had experimented with it before, but I mean, we started actually having to use it when Indiegogo.com, a, a popular crowdfunding site, froze our campaign and, and canceled it. And so we were like, well, ah, we have all this press now, but we have no way of getting money. And we said, you know, Bitcoin, we can use some Bitcoin. And of course that got some press as well. And then the organizers of this Bitcoin conference invited us here and I was like, well, what is it about? And it was really just in the last three weeks that I teased out, well, what is the relationship to what we're doing to Bitcoin? And I realized, oh my God, they're almost the same. The wills almost, or the tendencies are almost the same thing. I mean, Bitcoin allows you to slip outside of huge hierarchies that have existed, you know, for years. I mean, for eras, you know, epochs, uh, legal tender regimes. I mean, if this becomes a very popular currency, right? I mean, there's not even a million people using it, but I mean, begin to think about the scaling. Once a ton of people begin to use this, and the, the traffic's so small, how do you regulate a Bitcoin? I mean, 
there's incredible import, right? Incredibly devastatingly disruptive, and I hate to use that word disruptive, but I mean, you're gonna change everything about how finance is done, especially at a sovereign level, right? Like the United States can't achieve its, its little sovereign plans if everyone is using Bitcoin and not holding legal tender you know, dollars or using legal tender bank credit. So um, defense distributed, let's say the, the, wiki, the first wiki weapon, the first generation of wiki weapons, those, those basically undermine any gun control regime. You know? Not only can you have a gun if you want it, but you can download it from anywhere. You know, you don't, the border distinctions are gone. Which, I mean, lends me to, so you're, you're from Austin, Texas. Um, and, yeah, yeah, I go to school there. Or you go to school there. Yeah. And you're kind of naturally inclined towards anti-gun control. Yes, but I don't think the two are related. Does that make sense? Okay, so <laughs> I'm kind of like wild <laughs> conclusions. Um, well, I've only, I've only lived in Austin for like a year. Okay. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not Texan by birth. I mean, I'm, I'm Southern, I'm Southern American, or, you know, from the, I'm from Arkansas, which is the Southern state in the United States, so I, I'm Southern by birth, and the cultural attitudes are very much the same as those in Texas. Would you describe yourself as apolitical? Apolitical, okay, you mean like in a, in a literal sense, like I don't participate? Yeah. Okay, I'm just now arriving at a, yeah, apolitical participation, because I'm not going to vote for Mitt Romney, I'm not going to do it, Right. and I'm not going to vote for Barack Obama, because he's ultimate fraud and charlatan and youth have abandoned him. There's no reason to vote for either of these guys. I, I, I <laughs> totally disrespect it. Yeah. So right, I guess I'm apolitical right now. But would I vote in a local election and stuff? Yeah, probably. Uh, do you think uh, supporting Bitcoin is a political decision? For me, it's a political decision, yeah. yeah. I, I realize other people can come at it for other reasons, but I endorse Bitcoin for political reasons. I mean, I have so many questions about Bitcoin and like how it relates to the defense distributed, but... Yeah, um, I can see you talking. Not yeah. only am I tired, I kind of run out of imagination. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, I mean, if there's anything more that you want to add. Wow, man, okay. Um, about Bitcoin's relationship too, because I want to give you what you want, even if I don't know what it is. No, so far, you, I mean, you know, I yeah. think this is... I tend to answer and answer and answer, so sorry about that. But, um, I, I mean, I really liked what how you summed up your talk today by saying that the Gutenberg press, you know, liberated people and that's what 3D printing is going to do. I believe that. And it's almost a shame, right, that we have to represent the gun thing, which is a gimmick and turns people off, you know, the technology makes some people suspicious. And one of the most common criticisms I've seen is people saying, well, you know, shit, man, they're going to take away my internet, they're going to take away my 3D printing, you know, now they're going to take away my ammunition or they're going to regulate what they can regulate. And these are all kind of... These are people clinging to the scraps or whatever that they've been given by their governments, and I'm, and I'm trying to say, no, look, oh, you know, we're just on the, the cusp of some real moment of freedom. I'm not going to call it a golden age or anything, but we're we're arriving at, you know, if you believe in things like the technological singularity, we're arriving at just expansionary moments. Do you believe in that? I've I haven't had the time to really digest it, but I mean, I don't know, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um. I, I know what it is, it's that, you know, the progress will just like, it's, it accelerates so much that you can no longer tell where it's going in any direction, you know, that's the, the hugely expansive nature, and that's why it's a singularity, but I'm not sure if, I think things happen in fits and starts, right. you know, so I don't, I don't know. My impression is that cheap energy is kind of a thing of the past and actually kind of, right. we, we've reached the peak. I'd be, I'd be, a lot, that's a, a lot of people in the UK believe that, right? I mean, a lot, a lot of people, a whole lot more people in the UK are like on board with global warming, and what I would call eschatology than people in the United States, for example. And there are cultural attitudes and reasons for that, but I mean, and I just associate with this with global warming, but that seems to be the conversation that it happens a lot with, you know, oh, well, cheap energy's gone, you know, peak oil, global warming, these things all kind of happen together. I don't know. Uh, lifter reactors, for example, I think there's a future for nuclear. I think, you know, the liquid fluoride uh, reactors and everything. I, I don't know, better fissile materials, more abundant fissile materials than uranium. I'm optimistic that these problems will be saved and or these problems will be solved in unanticipated ways, just like Bitcoin was created out of uh, okay. nothing. So sort yeah. of endless human innovation will solve it. I, if you've read a uh, oh man, what's it called? The Beginning of Infinity. I would I would recommend it. I mean, this guy extrapolates what's happened to the world, especially in the last couple hundred years, and he extends it to you know thousand, two thousand, endlessly into the future. Not only will we we harness the power of our own evolution, but we'll harness all of the physical powers as well. I mean, 
the entire universe is essentially our canvas for creation. Yeah. Um, do you think that, um, considering the, 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 the scope of 3D printing, uh, considering the fact that you could be uh, open sourcing um, medical equipment mm -hmm. that you know, has patents attached, and so the price is just way out of the reach of African doctors or whatever, considering the good that you could do with 3D printing, do you think that you're being in any way irresponsible by pursuing the gun idea? Is, is right. it more about publicity, fame, or money? Right. Like, is it morally motivated? Or are you comfortable with, with what you're doing? I, I'm comfortable with it, yes. But of course, if I was a charlatan, I mean, I'd be, you know what I mean? Or a sociopath, I'd be comfortable with it either, either way. So it's not, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, right. Uh, right, I get this, this is another common one I get. It's like, well, you could have done anything, but you did this. Why did you do this? Um, I mean, it is something we wanted to do, and we realized the way we, the only way we were going to get the attention of the capital to do it was to introduce it in the way we did. And I don't think we were too confrontational in our presentation. Um, obviously, it's going to carry that controversy with it, no matter how you say it, because it's just like printing guns. You know? But we wanted to do it, and so if we want to do it, we wanted to find effective ways to raise the money and achieve the goal. So um, you know, people could be like, "Well, you could do anything." I'm like, "Well, we're doing this. This is what we want to do." And Am I ruling out that we could do these other things? Well, no, of course not. If I get good at 3D printing, you know, if we, if we discover novel ways of doing things and manipulating materials, why wouldn't we do other things? It's in our interest to do that as well. I mean, that's, I guess, my best answer. All right. That was the question I really wanted to ask. Oh, is it really? Yeah, yeah cool. All right, Grant, it was really nice to see you. Yeah, and I appreciate it, man. Cool. Cool. Hope it comes out all right.